7 p.m. Call the 2019 Annual Town Meeting of Rochester to order. Um, I'm Dan McKinley. I am the town moderator for this year, and I will um, moderate this meeting until, uh, at least until a, uh, my successor is elected in the first article. Um, I'd like to begin this evening with, um, with a Pledge of Allegiance and an invocation. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I'd also like to share something I've been reading over the last couple of years uh, that comes from the, uh, originally from the town of Danville. Um, they call it their, it's their town meeting invocation, and it goes like this. Welcome to the Rochester Town Meeting. We've come together in civil assembly as a community and a tradition that is older than our state itself. We come together to make decisions about our community. As we deliberate, let us advocate for our positions, but not at the expense of others. Let us remember that there's an immense gap between saying I am right and saying I believe I am right. <coughs> and that our neighbors with whom we disagree are good people with hopes and dreams as true and as high as ours. Let us always remember those that in the end, that always remember that in the end, caring for each other in this community is far greater, of far greater importance than any difference we may have. I want to run through, well, as you all know, we operate under Robert's Rules of Order, and I just want to remind you of a few of those things for those that are new, and, and a reminder since um, the last time we met. Uh, you may speak twice to an article um, for the second time after everyone that has wished to speak can speak, has spoken. Um, you will be permitted to speak five minutes um, each time you speak. Uh, Please um, stand if you're able when you speak and speak loudly. We have no traveling microphones this evening. I'll um, do my best to repeat questions or repeat uh, folks' questions or, or comments as best I can. But you'll be uh, best served by using your um, best outside voice and, and being as loud as you can. Um, for non-election articles, we will attempt to decide by vote, uh, by voice vote. Um, and if it looks like it's difficult to call the voice vote, we'll ask for a show of hands, a uh, division of the House. And I want to remind you that even with a voice vote, anyone can ask for a division of the House, um, and we'll raise hands and count, count hands. And also, if, um, if that doesn't go the way you like, you might also ask for a, um, a ballot. Seven people have to ask for a ballot on any issue, um, and we will honor that. I remind you that debate can be cut off and stopped on, a, on an article by calling the question or a previous question. And I want to remind you that you need to be recognized in turn uh, to, to call the question. You can't just shout it out. Um, wait your turn. Um, speeches must be confined to the merit of the question. You will not be allowed to uh, engage in personal attacks at any level. Only, only articles warned may be considered. Binding action cannot be taken under the other business article at the end. The role of the moderator is to help you accomplish your business expeditiously and fairly. Please raise your hand. I'll try and recognize you in the order that your hand goes up. And please state your name for the record. Um, I may have known you for 30 years, but I may have forgotten your name at this instant. So please um, call out your name so uh, we can get that in the record. Um, I want to remind you that the moderator's ruling can be appealed. And I encourage you to do so if, if there's something I, I do that uh, you don't quite agree with. And, um, and what you do is you can just call out you know, that you want to appeal a ruling that I've made. And I'll explain your ruling, and then we'll have a very brief debate on it, and then we'll vote whether to sustain the ruling or not. Um, if you think I'm violating Robert's Rules of Orders, please call out uh, point of order, and um, I will talk about what we're doing, and I'll uh, may get some advice from some of you experienced folks out there on how to go about what we're doing if I'm doing it wrong. Um, 
Moderator can use unanimous consent, and that's when I say if there are no objections, we'll suspend the rules, or if there are no objections, we'll cast one ballot for so-and-so if they're unopposed. So um, the way I'll use that is, is I'll say if there are no objections, and that is to say um, unanimously no one objects to moving this along a little more quickly and not following, following uh, Robert's rules. If anyone objects, um, please just call out, I object, and then we'll go through the process of um, making a motion, uh, moving it, seconding it, and having debate over uh, whatever, whatever the, the issue is. <coughs> Um, uh, Non-voters, non-residents um, may not uh, vote or, or, or speak under Robert's Rule of Voters, but at this time I'd like to ask uh, non-registered voters and visitors um, to raise your hand and, and let us know uh, who you are. Okay. Okay. So we have a few. It's been our tradition to allow uh, visitors um, to our town meeting and our, and our school meetings to uh, speak um, and share their Say your sentiments, and if there are no objections, we will allow our visitors to speak this evening. Okay. Thank you. Uh, we'll move to um, opening remarks. I don't believe the select board has any opening remarks uh, to share. Just thank you all for yep. thank you all for coming coming out and and for all that volunteer because this all works on volunteer help. So. Um, we're all part of it. Thank you. And I'd like to invite uh, Representative Haas to share some of her thoughts. Good evening. Um, so I'm sad to report that there is no more Doyle poll. Um, Senator Doyle, as you may know, um, is no longer in the Senate. Um, I looked up and he is now 92 years old. When I last saw him, he looked like he was starting to fail. So um, that very long tradition seems to be at an end. Um, I do have a written report. I have that, there's a, a stack of them out on the table in the hall. Um, I invite you to take one home. It has contact information on it. Um, so we've had some changes in the House of Representatives this year. Um, of the 14 standing committees, seven of them, half of them have new chairmen or chairwomen. We call them chairs, but I didn't want you to confuse that with the things that we sit on. Um, and, um, and so that has, um, that has changed our work a little bit because there are a lot of, a lot of and we have, I think it's 40 new members out of 150. So, um, so there's been an incredible amount of new energy, lots of new ideas. Um, there are, I think there were, at last count, there were something like 700 bills that had been introduced in the House and the Senate. So our, 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 our tiny staff, we have about, I think we have about 12 or 14 lawyers who work for all 180 legislators. Um, so they've been kind of going around with their heads down as they try to wade through the pile of, of stuff. Um, Always the, the big issue um, in the building is, is how we're going to spend your money. Um, and um, this year, interestingly, this year is the first year in several years that we didn't walk in um, with wondering where we were going to find a bunch of money that we, didn't, that we needed just to keep the doors of government open. Um, but the trade-off for that is that all of the needs that have been level funded for the last 15 years are suddenly making them, people are making those needs known. Um, one of the places that you're gonna notice it especially is in what we call our community partners. Um, the, uh, the mental health agencies, the parent child centers, the community hospital. Um, you know, we have a lot of what, what we would consider government function um, is, is, is carried out and is contracted <coughs> with local providers who do the work. Um, and um, and what happens is that is that their, their contracts tend to be level funded year to year, which means that they are not able to give their their staff increases, um, and so they end up with incredible staff turnover, which then means that the services are not delivered in the way that they should be. So that's one of the things that we're struggling with. We're also struggling to make sure that we have 
um, enough money set aside for um, the, the pension obligations of the state. Um, and my committee, uh, um, you'll see on my report, I talk a little bit about child care. My committee is really trying to address the, um, the question of availability affordabil and affordability of quality child care. Um, most, the, the number is that 70% um, of, of preschool age children have um, all available parents in the workforce. So that means that we have a lot of kids who need, who need care during the day. Um, and uh, the, the subsidy system that we have that, that is um, part federal money and part state money, um, again, it hasn't increased. We're using the, the, um, the reimbursement rates are based on market, the market rates from 2008. So you can, under, you can imagine that, that what that does is it says, okay, you get a subsidy, but by the way, you know, that's really only half of the bill. Um, and so we're trying to figure out how to, how to restructure that program. Um, we're hoping to get a bill out next week um, that, will, that will begin to, to address that problem. Um, on the Senate side, um, this is the year um, that the Senate can consider amendments to the Vermont Constitution. The way that works is that they get, they get introduced and voted on by both chambers um, in this biennium, and then again in the following biennium with a, with a new set of legislators. And if it pass, if they pass both both bienniums, both terms, then um, then they would go to the electorate for uh, on a referendum the following November. So it's about a five year process. Um, but what they they're looking at um, possibly changing the term of the governor from two years to four years. Uh, there's a, a similar proposal to change the term of state senators. Um, there's a privacy provision. Um, interestingly, there's, um, there's a suggestion that we need to change the Vermont Constitution because although we've always been very, very proud of the fact that we were the first state to have, um, to, to have in our Constitution that we wouldn't have slavery, um, it, it actually was qualified in it so that you couldn't be a slave after you were 21. Um, and there are people who think that maybe we should, maybe we should just take that out completely. There are other people who say, "Gee, the you know the Constitution is really a historic document." So nothing is ever easy. We try to make everything into a controversy, and we're working hard on that. So um, I will be around all week. My contact information is on the sheet. Let me know if you have questions. to the, uh, the business of the evening. Uh, we'll read the warning. It's on pages three and four of your town report. And the warning goes like this. The town of Rochester, Vermont, annual town meeting to be held Monday, March 4th, 2019 at 7 p.m. The legal voters of the town of Rochester, County of Windsor, State of Vermont, are hereby warned and notified to meet at the Rochester School Auditorium in said town on Monday, March 4th, 2019 at 7 p.m. to transact the following business from the floor. If there are no objections, I will not read the entire wording at this time, but we will go through each article, and each article will be read um, at least twice, uh, to put it, um, in front of you and then to uh, put it to a vote. So if there are no objections, I will not read the entire morning at this time. Okay, no objections, we'll move to Article 1, to elect a town moderator for the ensuing year. Um, any nominations? Frank? Yes, Frank. Frank Russell, I nominate Dan McKinley. Dan yeah, McKinley's been nominated. I'll second that. It's been seconded. And Jerry has been nominated. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, just kidding, just kidding. Any other nominations? So technically, closing nominations requires a, um, a motion and a, and a second. I think you know, if there are no there are not multiple nominations. I'll just say if there are no objections, we'll close nominations. Um, and um, 
There are no objections. We'll close nominations and ask the clerk to cast one ballot for Dan and Elaine. <coughs> Pleasure. Thank you, Dan. Article 2, to elect all town officers as required by law. Number one, a select board, three-year term. Number two, town clerk, one-year term. Number three, town treasurer, one-year term. Number four, lister, three-year term. Number five, collector of delinquent taxes. Six, library trustee. Seven, trustee of public funds. Eight, cemetery commissioner. Nine, agent to prosecute and defend suits. And 10, agent to convey real estate, one-year term. Need, um, need to uh, move and second each article to get it in front of you. Do you want to move that article? Chris Patrick, so this. Moved by Chris and seconded by Irma. Um, so we move to the first item on that list, uh, select board member for a three-year term. Nominations. Yes, Martha. Um, I'll nominate uh, June Hendricks to another term. Second. June Hendricks to nominate, seconded. Who else? Any other nominations? Is that her David? Is David second? Okay. Any other nominations? Only place up. No objections then. We'll close nominations. And I'll ask the uh, clerk to uh, cast one ballot for doing Hendricks and for select board for um, three years. Here term. we go again. Thank you. Number two, to elect a town clerk for a one year term. Mm -hmm. Nominations? I'd like to nominate Julie Smith. Julie Smith is good. And I'd also like to say that I feel really good passing on. <laughs> Seconded. Okay. Any other nominations for town clerk one year term? No objections. We'll close nominations and ask the clerk to cast one ballot for Julie Smith for town clerk for one year term. And thank you, Joanne, for your all your years of service. <laughs> <laughs> Number three, uh, to elect a town treasurer for a one year term. Nominations? Nominate Julie Smith. Julie Smith has been nominated for town treasurer. I'll second that, Rebecca Klein. Seconded by Rebecca Klein. Any other nominations for town treasurer? No objections. We'll close nominations and ask the clerk to cast one ballot for Julie Smith for town. Treasure takes one ballot for herself. <laughs> that legit. That was easy. Yeah. Congratulations. Congratulations, Julie. Thank Thanks. you. Number four, um, to elect a lister for a three-year term. Nominations. Yes, Julie. Uh, I'd like to nominate Caroline Mayer. Caroline Mayer is nominated. Oh, second. Seconded. We have the nominations for a lister for a three-year term. No objections. We'll close nominations and ask the clerk to cast one ballot for Carolyn Mayer for no. listening for a three-year term. Five, collector of delinquent taxes for a one-year term. Nomination, Frank. Frank Russell, I nominate Rebecca Klein. Rebecca Klein has been nominated. Second. Seconded by Berman. Any other nominations for collector of delinquent taxes, one-year term? Seeing none, no objections will close nomination. And as the clerk cast one ballot for um, Rebecca Klein for a collective delinquent taxes one year term. Number six, library trustee a five year term. Nominations, please. 
Let's go there. I'd like to nominate Kelly Kelly for a five-year term. Kelly Kelly's been nominated for a um, library trustee for a five-year term. Seconded by her father. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That's a surprise. <laughs> Any other nominations? No other nominations. We'll close nominations if no objections. And I ask the clerk to cast one ballot for County Kelly for library trustee for a five year term. Number seven. Number seven, trustee of public funds, a three year term. Nominations. Yes, Nancy. I'd like to nominate Sandy Pierce. Sandy Pierce has been nominated. Second, Seconded by Frank. Any other nominations? No other nominations? No objections? We'll close nominations and ask the clerk to cast one ballot for St. Pierce for trustee of public funds for three year term. <laughs> Number eight, cemetery commissioner for a five year term. Nominations? Nominations. Yes, Bruce Flew nominated Ross Laffin. Second. Seconded by Sandy. Um, Tom Pocket, I'm, I'm on the cemetery commission. I talked to Ross just yesterday. He's got uh, other plans in the near future. So he does not want to be renominated. And at such a short notice, we haven't done any, uh, any work to nominate anybody else. It's just uh, anybody from the floor. Any nominations for Secretary Commissioner, five year term? Okay. So the process would be the, the select board would appoint yeah. someone at some point when you want to find a body. Just water. <laughs> okay, we're moving on to number nine. Agents to prosecute and defend suits for a one year term. Nominate Bill Matthews. Bill Matthews has been nominated. <laughs> prosecute defense suits for a one year term. The last officer is the agent to convey real estate for a one year term. Nominations. Nominate Pat Hardy. Pat Hardy has been nominated. Second. Seconded by Frank. Any other nominations? <coughs> no, no objections. We'll close nominations. I ask the clerk to cast. Uh, one ballot for Pat Harvey for agent to convey real estate. Thank you to those who have served in the past and will serve in the future. Thank you. <laughs> Article three, to hear and act on the report of the town auditors. We uh, move this and second. Five percent moved it, seconded. Leslie Strauss, thank you. Any discussion? We no discussion. We'll close discussion and move to a vote. Article 3 to hear and act upon the report of the auditors. All in favor? Uh, as opposed, say nay. I said it. Article 3 passes. Never quite sure what that means when that passes, but. Um, Article 4, to hear and act on the reports of the town officers. We want to move that in a second. Second. Moved. Seconded by Vernon. 
Discussion on reports to the town officers? Seeing no discussion, we'll move to a vote on Article 4 to hear and act on the reports of the town officers. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Those opposed, say nay. Article 4 passes. Article 5. Shall the voters agree to pay all taxes for the fiscal year July 1, 2019 to June 30, 2020, fiscal year 20, to the town treasurer as provided by law? I'm going to move this and we'll second it. Moved by Barb, seconded by Burma. Any discussion? No discussion. We'll move to a vote on Article 5. Shall all voters agree to pay all taxes for fiscal year July, July 1, 2019 to June 30, 2020 to the town treasurer as provided by law? All in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed say nay. Article 5 passes. <clears throat> Article 6, shall the voters authorize payment of real and personal property taxes in four installments with due dates being August 15, 2019, November 15, 2019, February 14, 2020, and May 15, 2020. That should be February 15. February 15? Oh, it should be February 15? Yeah. yeah. Um, excuse me, Pam. Yes. February 15th is a weekend day. February 14th is a, I can't remember, was it a Friday or a Monday? But that's why it is 14th. Okay. Well, they're usually due, if it's on the weekend, then it's the next business day after, I think. This is, this is going to be the day. So, yeah, it's, it, this is how it's worn. So we'll, we'll it. Uh, I'm going to start that over. Shall the voters authorize payment of real and personal property taxes in the four installments with due dates being August 15, 2019, November 15, 2019, February 14, 2020, and May 15, 2020, by delivery to the tax collector before 4 p.m. on that date? Postmarks are not considered timely payment. So, um, move and second. So move, seconded by Robert. Any discussion? No discussion. If there are no objections, I will not read that article again and ask for a vote. All in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed say nay. Ayes have it. Article 6 passes. Article 7. Shall the voters authorize total fund expenditures for the operating expenses of $1,015,315 of which $749,315 shall be raised by taxes. And move it in, second it. Removed, and Leslie, second. Discussion? <coughs> well, I'm just, unless I read this, I'm not reading this properly or correctly, it looks like that we've taken out some of the, uh, in particular, um, money set aside in anticipation of buying equipment for the road crew. Uh, just like a comment or a reaction or reasoning for that, please. Yep, um, we have, and not only the road crew, but the uh, fire department equipment reserve fund. And basically we resorted to that in an attempt to keep the increase of the taxes relatively acceptable. We started out looking at a 13% increase, which was not acceptable, and we've kept it down to around 2, 2, 2 and 2.3. And, um, and then there's a lot of debate about whether it is, it is appropriate to put money in the bank to save up for equipment or to perhaps at the time of buying the equipment and, um, take out a loan and at, at good municipal rates and, and not have that money sitting in the bank. But in this, in this, that's, that's a discussion to continue on in the, um, in the budget world. But at this point, um, in reflection of some of the other constraints on the budget, that's, this was our, our 
way of getting some elbow room to keep the tax down. Do you have a discussion on this article? Seeing none, we'll uh, close discussion and move to a vote on Article 7. Shall the voters authorize total fund expenditures <coughs> for operating expenses of $1,015,315, of which $749,315 shall be raised by taxes? All in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed say nay. Ayes have it. Article 7 passes. Article 8. Shall the voters appropriate $45,625 towards operating expenses of the Rochester Public Library? Moved or removed. Seconded by Gary Rupkart. Discussion? I, um, I guess I'd like to know first off what this $5,000 is actually going to be spent on. And the reason I'm asking this is because I, I've seen this budget and what is the for $5,000 in their budget this year for libraries. That's Article 8. Page 45, 44, and 43. Uh, I'm looking at the budget on page yeah, 44 and 45. Page 44 and 45. Can folks hear Joanne in the back? Very well. Oh, sorry, well, I'll try to be loud. Um, you know, every year I see budget and finance spend countless hours trying to keep everybody's budgets as close in line as they can for the Rochester taxpayers. And this year they've cut the constables, they've cut water and sewer, they've cut appropriations, they've cut funding for equipment that's necessary to run this town. I think that the library trustees should try to be more fiscally responsible as well. If you just look at things like um, systems maintenance, was budgeted twelve hundred dollars, four hundred and twenty-two was spent. Budgeted eleven hundred, one hundred and twenty-six was spent so far. Things like that could be reduced. Um, there's a lot of other ones too. It's, it's you know equipment. Computer equipment, 900 budgeted, 500 spent. 1,000 budgeted, 559 spent. Um, supplies, there's another one. Um, electricity, let's get those lights on a timer. I love seeing lights out there, but get them on a timer. Let's cut some of the electric bills. Um, another one is custodial salaries, budget 2,000, pay 1,700. Budget 2000, so far it's 900. Next year's budget is $2,340. The insurance is another situation. Um, general repairs and maintenance. Budget 1500, spend 497. Budget 1000, spend 400. So I think that the trustees should be more fiscally responsible. I also kind of feel that for a part time library employee, we shouldn't be paying $8,000 for a full-fledged health insurance plan when she is or will be eligible for Medicare in July. That's my, I'm a taxpayer here as well as all of you. Our sidewalks are a mess. Our town office needs to be scraped and painted and taken care of before it rots away. And our town garage is, is in terrible shape. Personally, I'd rather see the extra money from this go to those things. Further discussion on this article? Um, all right, let's see. So, let's see. I, I will tell you that year after year, I go find my... Barb, okay. Would you, yeah. um, I'm a treasurer of Rochester Public Library and representation. Um, I go through this budget every year, and it's been asked line by line. We do try to be fiscally responsible. This $5,000 that we're talking about that last year, the way we got the money was we had to get a separate article on the select on the um, town um, meeting bill to have that pass. It's 
our bid passive, <coughs> ask for otherwise. I don't know if everybody knows here, but the, but the town does not pay for 100% of the operating expenses of the library. So we do a lot of fundraising to pay for the other portion of, of the expenses. And I think we are at a point that they maybe give us 53% of the operating expenses. So just know that we are working all the time to make up that difference, and I hope that you will consider that by your vote. I just have a question. Um, the librarian is, is is the librarian a town employee? No. Is a it's an employee of the trustees. Correct. I see. So but it's paid by the town. The salary is paid by the town, the insurance is paid by the town. So within their budget. Yeah. But they're increasing their budget to pay for this. So in all in all effect, the Rochester taxpayers are paying for this when it's they're paying for a portion. So if, what are what are the what is the policy in general to get full health insurance in terms of length of times? Twenty hours, thirty hours, 30. how many hours a week? Thirty. And the library position is how many hours a week? Nineteen. And it's salary. Okay. Um, I can. Yolanda uh, Ravesh, I'm the chair. Public Library trustees, and uh, uh, back in 2005, speaking to the insurers, uh, back in 2005, which none of us were on the board, uh, the Board of Trustees voted uh, to give um, the librarian the insurers. And at that time, the town policy did not specify any uh, our limit. So the select board agreed to that. They had to, and uh, that, that, and that was two, uh, 2005. Uh, since then, the uh, policy, the personnel policy has changed, but this yes. remains. So this, it, it goes back to 2005. And like I said, it had been decided by the trustees, uh, approved by the select board, and that's how it started. And Jeanette will go on Medicare in July. 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 So that should cut half of that insurance policy then, right? So here. Well, she goes on in July, it takes from January to December, so that half of that should be reduced from July on. Right? So that it shouldn't be an eight thousand dollar policy. Can, can folks uh, be recognized, please, with, if they want to speak? I just want to say, uh, my name is Catherine Champion, that uh, my hat does go off to Jeanette and mm -hmm. the trustees. Uh, it's a fantastic library. Yeah. Yeah. All the way in the back. I'm sorry, I can't see you. Carla McCurrier, yeah, I'd like to, uh, I've been in town for like 34 years, and I've kind of watched the library on the side, things going on and stuff, and I just want to say that uh, there's a whole lot more stuff being offered at the library now than there ever was in the past. Um, Yo, let me see who else would like to have a chance to speak, and then I'll come back to you, Kevin. The benefit of the library in this town is huge. <clears throat> it's a small town, and it's a great library, and it has a lot of good programs that it brings in. And I think it's worth our while to keep it as it is. Tim? Now I'll come over the corner. Uh, <clears throat> I'd like to uh, just echo quickly what Kevin said and also suggest that while I appreciate the select board's effort to submit a budget that's got a 2% increase in it, I have to beg to differ with the strategy of putting certain things up for an annual discussion, particularly for something like our town library. It is either, in our belief as a community, 
a function of a community to have a literate population or at least the opportunity to access literacy or it isn't, I don't see it as a negotiable piece. And while I won't make any effort to have the select board or the community re-enter this article into the regular annual budget tonight, I would encourage the select board to consider this year re-examining this practice of removing things from a budget that matter in order to present what in some ways is an artificial 2.3% increase when you do that. I would also suggest that the same thinking could apply to things like uh, equipment, uh, particularly for the fire department. But again, as Dune says, that's got a debate that can go on forever. I don't believe that the library being removed from the budget is a debate that could go on forever. I think it belongs as part of the business of this community. Thank you. I'm back there. Yeah. Uh, my name's Larry Creech. I just have a question for the commissioner of the library. If you're going to go on Social Security, what would happen to the other $4,000 that this is spent? <coughs> Can anyone from the trustee answer that? Is four thousand is not going to be spent? Well, if you're not, if you go on Social Security <coughs> and the budget is eight thousand dollars for insurance, and then the federal government's going to pick up half the year, what would? I'm just curious, what would happen to the other four thousand dollars that's not being used for insurance? Well, the policy is, I believe, you know, is paid annually, so that the uh, Medicare will go into effect next fiscal year. So this will be re in reflected in the next uh, budget, next year's budget. And uh, so, and does that answer your question? Well, generally when you reach retirement age, you start collecting Medicare and Social Security at, at that birth date or whenever you deem it. So then you would have that surplus. That's all I'm asking what you would use that for unless you absolutely have to pay the annual fee. It would kind of be a waste of money to pay $4,000 for a policy that you're not only going to use half of. Maybe you could find another vehicle that would help you. This is exactly what we wanted yeah. to happen. Uh, yes. This is what we wanted to bring. Yeah. So, Catherine, can you wait? Uh, Catherine, can you wait? Because you're spoken. I, you know, I, all I can say is that our budget will be less by that amount. Mm -hmm. And also, like, uh, I'd like, <coughs> oh, can I talk to something else regarding the budget or the questions that Joanna raised? Or we are still talking about yeah, the, yeah, go the ahead. insurance. Go ahead. Okay, as far as the lights and, uh, yeah, the lights are off, you know, but only till March in, uh, soon. They will be off soon. I, and then, um, but we we changed all our lights into to LEDs, and we so we have we are trying to be very efficient, and uh, we, there's a lot of savings in that. And any other any increases that we um, you know have to meet uh, in housekeeping, you know everything goes up. Our custodians were working at a minimum wage. Minimum wage went up, and uh, we need to give them at least a couple of dollars more over the uh, minimum wage. And we have trouble always finding people to uh, shovel. And so all those costs, like, uh, uh, they have to be met. And um, at just at this point, I'd like to say that we don't ask nothing for our books. So all of our books, which is the main source like of the library, this is the heart of the library. All of our books are purchased, you know, from our restricted uh, endowment. So that's, uh, I think that's huge. So like we said, the library only gets 
3% uh, from the town. Otherwise, we get annual campaigns every year. So the, uh, I think everybody saw the beautiful stained glass windows upstairs. All the restorations we have to, they are in, some of them are in, still in bad shape. We, every year we restore them or every couple, as, as, as much as we can. Uh, and that's all paid. Yeah, yeah, that doesn't come from town taxes. It's all being raised uh, from our annual campaign. As far as also furniture and all of the, you know, the floors. So all the major, major things. You know, so all we ask, you know, in the budget, is maintenance and like you know <coughs> electricity, all the utilities and all that stuff. Plus, uh, so I don't think that's asking too much. It's a public. It, it is a uh, town entity. Hey, Bob, and thank you. And back to you, Kevin. Just, I just want to point out that when we're talking about salaries, we're talking about a personal person. Yeah. Uh, I think you really have to realize that that person might not be there, so you therefore cannot even begin to plan on. Even talking about it, telling me that, that this person is going to go turn 65 and be on Medicare. That's just so inappropriate. Yeah. Yeah. This position yes. can be anybody, so you have to continue to another one. I think we have, we're making some assumptions about age and retirement and Medicare. At, at 65, you're eligible for Medicare A, and the federal government gives it to you. But, it, but you don't necessarily have to take Medicare B, which covers doctor's appointments and durable goods and home visits, and that's the one that you have to pay for this year, 135 dollars So you can defer Medicare B if you have credible other insurance, and most people who are working do. So this is something that the employer and the employee have to work out, not this body <laughs> with respect to what they're going to do with insurance. And then, of course, once you do go on Medicare, there's that 20% that Medicare doesn't pay, which is another insurance policy. Medicare A, Medicare B, optional Medicare C, Medicare D, <laughs> prescription drugs. I mean, truly, just come to the Council on Aging and we'll talk to you about Medicare. But don't make assumptions about what, some, what should be somebody's choice, right, their right to choose. Yes, Frank, uh, yeah. Nancy Badness, I just, um, I think that we should not be presuming, although it would be fine if it is, that the current um, librarian is going to remain the librarian. And we need to allow for insurance of anyone who sits in that position, um, whether she could retire, she could decide to leave, we could hire somebody who's 35 years old, and if we haven't budgeted for their insurance, then we haven't budgeted appropriately. We're presuming that our current uh, librarian is going to stay. And I don't think we should do that. Frank, and then Tim. Um, yeah, I, I, I believe with Becky that this discussion of insurance is really out of place. Um, but, but also, um, I'm old enough to be receiving Medicare. But I think there's some assumption that, well, your birthday is in November. Come November, you'll be receiving Medicare. But it, it just doesn't work that way. There's a lag of some months. So I think this is not only out of place, but it's not even according to how Medicare works. So I just, right. What I'm holding here is just a list of all the you know, activities that the library is hosting. So come February, March. And my God, this, this library has been more active recently than I've ever known it. And if we look at this town and think of how many places where you can have the Vermont Humanities Council, planting your cutting garden, the Feminist Book Club, Di Diabetes Support Group, White River Players, AARP on Preventing Identity <coughs> Gap, History Book Club, Yoga and Dance for ages three to six, Yoga and Dance for ages seven to 12, Seven to ten. Yeah, I kind of like to go up there on April six and see that. <laughs> but it's just, this has become a, a there are there are very few places that are that are open um, and, and you know a resource for all of these varied activities. And as far as I can see, they just I don't know. It, 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 it's like the springtime when you have seeds that you're putting in the ground. They they are flourishing. They are growing. So I mean. 
Tim, there's a few other folks that haven't spoken yet. You've spoken once, so Brenda, then Chris. <coughs> So I would like to call the question. I think that's the correct term, is it not? That is. I can use that. Uh, by a two-thirds vote, we can um, end debate. So all in favor of ending debate, say aye. Aye. Those who would like to continue <coughs> debate, say nay. Nay. If the ayes have it, um, we'll call the question. We'll move to a vote. Article 8, shall the voters appropriate $45,625 towards operating expenses of the Rochester Public Library. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Those opposed, say nay. It appears the ayes have it, and Article 8 passes. Can I just say something there? Sure. So, uh, in, in response to the, you know, upset that we pulled this out for discussion, look how much recognition the library got by pulling it out for this discussion. We actually achieved our goal. Um, the library is uh, its own budget. We can't control it one way or the other. So we felt this was the best way to bring it to the floor, and uh, we support it as well. Article 9, shall the voters appropriate $71,757 to provide ambulance service from White River Valley Ambulance? What about? Can I get a move that? And a I moved it. Moved over here, I didn't see who. Jenny moved it and seconded. Barbara. Uh, discussion? Thanks. I'm Vic Rubato. I'm the uh, process representative for the board of uh, White River Valley Angels. I also have to be president of the board of White River Valley Angels. And I'd like to just turn your attention to page 47. Go for it. Uh, you'll notice there's no heading at the top of this column. That's just a column. So let me just tell you what the column titles are. The one on the top left where it says 1216 runs. That's the 2018 budget that will come. The next column over to the right is 2018 estimated actual. The next column over uh, is 2019 budget. And then the uh, column with the percentages in it, it's a percent change from 2018 budget to 2019 budget. And if you go all the way down to the end of that column, a total request for 2019 versus 2018 is exactly changed. the same. It's unchanged. Uh, there are a variety of uh, methods of controlling costs and uh, from the functional projected volume. Uh, we're not requesting any additional dollars for 2019. <coughs> So 
rescue squad is another important town function that the select board does not create the budget for. So possibly it's a good thing that we vote on it separately when the select board warns this town meeting. But I want to warn us all, alert us all, that next year, although the rescue squad budget will still be separate and voted separately, it's possible that the select board, having achieved their goal of recognizing the importance of the library, will fold that budget back into the regular budget, and it will seem like we're spending a lot more money, when in fact we're not. Thank you. Frank. <laughs> I had a question for Dick Bravado. I wonder why the, why, the, um, why, the, why the budget for this year is uh, flat. Is that because there are more transfers? As, as I mentioned, there are a couple of things. We're expecting uh, more transfers yeah. to the hospital, and so it's a better way to help generate revenue, which keeps the deficit low. Um, and just you know, putting attention to it, uh, looking at very close to expenses. Uh, and uh, the staff are taking a little bit higher percentage of the uh, cost of uh, health insurance. Uh, and so it's, it's, a, it's a whole variety of reasons for which uh, uh, expenses have been controlled. Uh, but the volume uh, with the transfers has been a large part of it. And that, and that is happening as projected for the first couple months of the year. So that's, that's been very but the, but the takeaway is that the management of White River Valley Ambulance has been much improved and enhanced over the years. Yeah, we have a new executive director, Matt Parrish, who mm -hmm. school here. So you know Matt. Uh, he uh, uh, was our acting director when the previous uh, director uh, went into the service full time in the summer. He's acting as of August and made permanent director as of, uh, as of uh, January. I just wanted to call attention to, I mean, in your in your letter on the other side, you have actually the number of runs you sold. Yeah. I think Rochester was at 77. So. Yeah, that's through 10 months. So that's over a month. Right. right. Okay. Well. Paul Wells, if I might just address this quick, with more transfer runs, how does that affect the time of ambulance response to uh, and rides and ambulances? How does it affect response time to those who may need it? Yeah. Uh, hasn't been a problem so far. We monitor it closely. That was a, an issue that uh, we wanted to make sure that we're not uh, causing problems elsewhere. But uh, there's enough uh, availability of time in the day that uh, uh, so far it's been working well. And uh, I don't see a big increase in the volume, but each individual uh, transfer does help. Uh, and usually from Gifford to someplace else. So, you know, scale to the size of this community. We're not going, you know, way out further afield to bring people in and uh, transfer. Thanks. No further discussion. We'll move to a vote on Article 9. Article 9, shall the voters appropriate 71,000 $757 to provide ambulance service for the from White River Valley ambulance. All in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed say nay. Ayes have it. Article 9 passes. Article 10 to see if the voters will vote to appropriate the following sums as requested by the below listed community agencies. Central Vermont Council on Agency, $2,500. Claire Martin Center, $2,066. Green Up, Vermont, $100. Quintown Seniors Center, $9,849. Orange County Parent Child Center, $250. Safe Line, Inc., $250. Stagecoach, $1,300. Vermont Rural Fire Hydrant, $100. Visiting Nurse Association, $4,800. White River, White River Partnership, $875. And Women's Safe, $250. For a total of $22,340. So moved. Moved by David. 
Seconded by Myrna. Discussion? Catherine. My name is Catherine Shankman, and as of this month, uh, I'm 22 years with the Central Vermont Council on Aging. I am the local case manager and senior advocate working with folks 60 and over and younger disabled adults. If you look at my agency's report on page 54, you will see that this last year, I provided 1,838 hours to the town of Rochester. If you divide that by the 40 hours a week I'm paid, <laughs> I've given 46 uh, to, to Rochester, 46 weeks out of 52 a year, and this is only one of five towns I serve. So, and I understand the <laughs> Are an Asian community. I wish there were more of me, but I gotta tell you, when our appropriations go down, we're not gonna get further to that goal. And as Sandy said, we're one of the community partners who just get level funded. So we're we're working with actually less staff across Central Vermont than we have. I used to actually have someone who assisted me in the office. That doesn't exist anymore. So. Uh, I don't know when is appropriate for me to move to at least bring it up to the level funding of the same amount we've had for the last several years. Would this be a, the time? Sure. I'd like to move from the floor that we restore the appropriation to $3,000, which is the same amount we've asked for year after year for a long time. So you are um, amending to this amend article to make um, Central Vermont Council on the Aging, $3,000. That would raise the total to $22,840. Point of order? Yeah. Can we discuss amend the uh, this amendment along with and combine it with amending this number for any of the other agencies involved in this article? Or do we have to vote on them all separately? <laughs> Um, good question, David. Um, if that's Catherine's motion. If Catherine makes that motion. Yeah, and Dave's just asking for a point of order. Um, if so Catherine someone makes a multiple motion. Someone could amend Catherine's motion to add another another amount onto there. And if it would stop there, you can only you can amend an article once and then you can amend amend it once and take care of those until you're back to um, the article or the amended article if it passes. Point of order? So, yeah. Can the chair ask the body if there's anybody else that wants to amend any of the other amounts on this article? Um, I don't think I, I don't think that would be appropriate. Okay. Do you? Uh, anyone is free to make an amendment. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yes. I just want to clarify that once this amendment is made and perhaps accepted, further amendments may be made. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, we can amend the heck out of it as we go through. Yeah. Um, okay, so there is, um, uh, make sure I'm doing this right, there's um, uh, an amendment to this Article 10 to change uh, Vermont Council on Aging. Um, from $2,500 to $3,000, which changes the total to $22,840. Seconded. Thank you. Uh, discussion on the amendment of increasing it to $3,500. I'm going to go up to the back here and then to you. My name is Norman Smith. I've been working on the Rochester about 50 years. And I, I think Captain's job or business is to to take care of our aging population. And you may look at the numbers and say, gee, that seems like a waste of money. I don't know how it got wiped off at the budget process the way it did. But the pro one of the problems is we can sit here and say, well, what are we getting for this? Catherine services a lot of people in our town. And uh, she can't, or the, the names are not, not you can't get a name, you can't get a, a representative of looking at a person that gets the benefit of this. Because it's 
because they're quiet. But I'm here to tell you that I have two family members, my mother-in-law and my aunt, were since passed, but they they're definitely aged like like I am. So <laughs> <laughs> it was it got to be a burden, not really a burden, but it was our, our duty, like the duty of myself, to look after these two ladies. And we were called all kinds of nights and days for emergencies. Didn't most of them turn out to be very bad emergencies, but still we were running around doing it. And through Catherine's efforts, we were able to find some assistance. It didn't really cost a lot of money for anybody, but it, it eased our burden a lot. And I think we should think about that we're all, you look around here, a lot of white-haired people, not one of them. <laughs> we, we feel fine today, but tomorrow, the next day, we might not feel that great. And uh, it's nice to know that we have someone in the house here, that, in our town, that really is good at our job and gets the job done and, and she um, it's like a thing to our family what she has done for my mother-in-law and my aunt and I think that uh, because you can't see all the people that's benefiting from this program I fully endorse getting the funding up to back to what we really need. the title of the agency you said Vermont Council on Aging. I have to assume that Central Vermont Council on Aging is the correct title. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Any other discussion? Yes. Hi, I'm Susie Sutherland. I'm also going to beneficiary of Council on Aging just because of that accident. I don't, uh, well, first of all, the, the average American Vermonter is 65 and older, and, and that's the numbers are showing up. But um, it, it, it helps other people. Anybody who needs or has an injury or sickness, um, there's all these wraparound services that are available that we don't even know about. <coughs> and when you're injured or sick, you can't figure out how to get those services that you said for the woman. And half of the women can do that for you. And it's a service that discussion will move to a vote on this amendment for Article 10. Um, let's see if the voters were vote to appropriate the following sums as requested by the below listed community agencies. I won't read them all again, but just the amendment is increasing the Central Vermont Council on Aging from $2,500 to $3,000, making that Article 10 total $22,000. $840. All in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed say nay. The amendment passes. Can I still ask a question? Sure. Yeah, so we're now we're back to the to the article as amended and we can have continued discussion. Yep, go ahead. I think I can explain that. Uh, Carrie McDonald came to the budget committee and requested that it come off appropriations. So, 
and go into the budget, into the recreation department's budget. Oh. So it, it, that's where it went. Any other discussion on the article as amended? Seeing none, we'll... I'm just going to ask if we can call the question. Yeah. Seeing no discussion, we'll, we'll move to a vote on this article. Article 10, to see if the voters will vote to appropriate the following sums as requested by the below listed organizations and community agencies. If there are no objections, I will not read them all again. Um, but the total is now twenty. $2,840. All in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed say nay. Article 10 passes. As amended. Article 11. Shall the voters approve an amount of $15,000 to continue funding the town buildings and property reserve fund? Moved by Joanne, and seconded by Verna. Discussion? <clears throat> Seeing none, will Frank? Yeah, I'm kind of, I mean, I'm, I'm not gainsaying the amount. I'm kind of wondering how that amount was arrived at. Whether that, yes. Yeah, I guess that's the question. It's definitely not as much as we need, but it's 50% um, more than we put in last year, just in an effort to you know, tackle some maintenance issues that are pressing. Any further debate? Discussion? Seeing none, we'll move to a vote on Article 11. Shall the voters approve an amount of $15,000 to continue funding the town buildings and property reserve fund? All in favor say aye. 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 As opposed to nay. Aye, have it. Article 11 passes. Article 12, shall the voters approve an amount of $1,000 to fund the tennis reserve, tennis reserve fund for ongoing and future court maintenance? We want to move this one. Verma moved it and seconded by someone. Gary, thank you. Getting tired. <laughs> uh, any discussion? Seeing no discussion, we'll move to a vote. On Article 12, shall the voters approve an amount of $1,000 to fund the Tennis Reserve Fund for the ongoing and future court maintenance? All in favor say aye. Aye. As opposed, say nay. I said it. Article 12 passes. Article 13 to transact any other legal and proper business to be brought before said meeting. Dick? Yeah, uh, I'd like to suggest to the select board that maybe next year you put in your budget some money for our uh, decent sounds. <laughs> I think it crosses over into the school budget. You have to cross that over, right? No mics, no meeting. Might have to come to the school meeting for that. That's in May. Any other non binding business we brought before? Robert, in the back. In the back. Robert oh, go ahead, Robert. Hello, everyone. It's Robert from Bethel. Um, I'm here tonight pretty much to represent the Rutland Windsor Voting District. Um, specifically, to protect democracy and the process thereof. 2020 is coming like a freight train, and voting, voting stations, polling stations are going to start taking actions to make sure that they're properly facilitated. Um, you might remember a bumper sticker back in the 90s that said, question authority. And tonight I'm simply here to question the Board of Civil Authority of Rochester. We were presented uh, on election day rules that were unwritten 
but enforceable by the Board of Civil Authority. Now, I've been on the phone with the Secretary of State, attorneys, Ethan Allen Institute, and asked, how does the town, how does the select board, how does the Board of Civil Authority enforce unwritten rules? On the day of election, we knew nothing about the Board of Civil Authority. And guess what? We didn't know anything about the quote-unquote unwritten rule enforced by the town. Now, we didn't know you couldn't park a car. We didn't know you couldn't play signs. We didn't know you couldn't park a bus on the parking lot, supposedly blocking parking spots, which it wasn't. So I'm asking the town of Rochester to look forward to 2018 and look at all the other towns and what they're doing with the boards of civil authority. This includes, or maybe Doon or someone in the room can explain and define what is the Board of Civil Authority in the town of Rochester? Who's on it? And what are their unwritten rules? And do the unwritten rules also fall under not just election day, which that is what the Board of Authority's authority is, to facilitate and demogra democratically allow people to vote freely it doesn't matter if you don't want signs 50 feet from your building. It doesn't matter if you You can write the rules. The Board of Civil Authority can put, make any rule pretty much what they want. But you need to public them or publicize them. You need to post them on the website. So a candidate or a supporter of a candidate can walk onto a town clerk's office like I did at 712 on Rochester's <coughs> town clerk's office. And I was verbally assaulted for something I didn't even know anything about. And the apology has been made, and thank you, Joanne. It was a very hard day for us, and for a lot of people that were supporting us to hear what happened. It was a, a defilement of democracy right in this little town. The, the truck that was parked, how does the town know that the truck that was supposedly illegally parked wasn't parked there at 6.30 in the morning? How did they know that? Why was the truck towed? Why was the person, the candidate, demanded to come to the town of Rochester to pay fines and the towing costs? Who is the person that made the rule that you cannot park a car or a truck on a town parking lot, over, supposedly overnight? Where's the rule? Where's the rule that you can't place political signage in front of a polling station. The rule, the unwritten rule in Rochester is you have to stand with your signs all day. You can't, you can't leave your sign. So we drove to every other polling station. There the signs were beautifully displayed. There was no one standing there. You were held prisoner in front of the voting station. And in fact, because we were called to town Rochester to pay a fine, and a towing fee and deal with the drama and doom announcing to our team that, uh, did you guys know we have unwritten rules here in Rochester? Do you know how demeaning that was? Rob McFadden said, Doom, you can't enforce an unwritten rule. Mr. Condos has said that to me. <coughs> the Secretary of State's office has said it to me. Every attorney, every attorney I talk to, they laugh when they say, who who is trying to enforce unwritten rules? So now everyone complains about the debacle with Donald Trump and collusion in Russia and all this other BS that we can't do anything about. But in this little town, in our little voting Windsor County, Windsor, Rutland, Windsor County, we need to just synchronize with just, just write the rules that you would like and put them on your website and post them appropriately. And that's all I'm asking for 2018. Just make it a fair fight. Because Thank you, Robert. So, Thank you, Robert. I'm sorry to take too much time, but it's very just, important. Just a little bit over, and I want to give other anyone else an opportunity. Thank you very much. Yep. So noted. Yes. On another all, totally different note, I want to thank the new row crew that we have. Yes. I think they're doing one hell of a great job. Yeah. Yeah.